Hi there, my name is Dr. Cameron Jones and I'm an environmental microbiologist and public health scientist. For many of you, and including all of us here in Australia, we are entering summer. Now, that's fantastic because sunny weather means shorts and sandals and flip-flops and Havianas. Now, for many of us, that might be a problem because of something called foot fungus. And when I was looking into the research literature this year for really interesting papers to bring to you, I found this particular paper, which found a high correlation between a particular type of skin complaint that affects the nails, not just on your toenails, but preferentially on your toenails, and the experience of COVID-19. So I'm going to be getting to the research shortly, but before that, I want to bring to you an overview of fungal foot infections. And so today we're going to be focusing on five things to know about toenail fungus and COVID-19. Now, I know that's a particularly scary topic and it's something you might not want to be thinking about, but in order to bring this to you in the most effective manner possible, I've chosen to highlight some of the key questions which I'm asked about all the time. And we're gonna go through and focus on these key connections and questions and answers now. So the first one is, what are the symptoms of nail fungus? Well, it has a very high prevalence in the community. In fact, 10% of the population has a fungal nail infection at any point in time. And typical symptoms include pain caused by cracked or fragile nails, and they may often be thick and discolored. And that characteristic yellow, brown, or white appearance may cause embarrassment in social and work situations. Now, it doesn't sound very good, does it? But you need to understand some of these key questions and answers before we can move into the risks of this and what you can do to overcome a fungal nail infection. But we'll track through each of the questions. So who is most likely to get a fungal nail infection? Well, anyone, but especially those with diabetes, anyone with a weakened immune system, those with blood circulation problems, anyone who is suffering from athlete's foot or has a nail allergy. And again, we need to recognize that nail uh, injuries can occur, for example, if you stub your foot and not just from uh, some sort of impact uh, blow. So we need to be aware of this and be mindful of it. Now, what is the medical or technical term for nail fungus? Well, it's a bit of a mouthful, but if you research any of this for yourself on PubMed or on Google, you'll find that the medical term for the fungus that affects the nails is called onychomycosis. Now, is this the same as foot fungus? Essentially, no. Foot fungus is a fungal skin infection like athlete's foot. And there are other fungi as well, but those that preferentially colonize the nail bed are called dermatophyte fungi. And the most common one is called Trichophyton rubrum. And there are definitely other opportunistic fungi such as Alternaria, Fusarium, Aspergillus, and yeasts, but Candida and other yeasts are also definitely affecting the foot as well. And I'm always going on about these opportunistic pathogens because water damaged buildings are a prime reservoir of a lot of those fungi that can cause secondary infections. And certainly that's why we monitor water damaged buildings for surface contamination as well. Now, let's go through, how do you get onychomycosis? Well, these fungal and yeast pathogens get into the small cracks in the nail or surrounding the skin and cause an infection. You're probably wondering how we diagnose onychomycosis. Well, 
Your healthcare practitioner or your doctor can undertake microscopy using a chemical called potassium hydroxide, which looks at the nail clippings or scrapings under the microscope to look at what they actually appear like. And here's a typical example, and you can actually see the fungal hyphae under the microscope, and that's what's causing the itchiness or the discoloration to the nail bed. And that's what we definitely don't want. Now, moving right through to the next question, how do we prevent a fungal nail infection? Well, you obviously want to keep your feet clean and dry, clip your nails short, don't walk barefoot in public showers, and look for signs of good hygiene at nail salons. Definitely don't share clippers or nail buffers with other people. Now, you're probably wondering, how do you treat fungal nail infection? Well, obviously you need to make an appointment with your medical practitioner or healthcare provider. That's really important. There are some definite antifungal treatments that can be utilized, and I will highlight some of these now. Now, worst case scenario, the nail may need to be removed completely, but there are prescription antifungals. I certainly don't want to, I would never advocate people undertaking surgery unless it was uh, absolutely necessary. From a microbiologist's point of view, microbes there's always a way to attack them. And so I'd be discussing this with your healthcare practitioner to see whether or not some of the newer types of antifungal treatments would be suitable. Now, what are those? And I'm going to highlight one or two of these now, but I may as well do this now. This is something called photodynamic therapy. And again, all the links are going to be in the show notes. So you'll be able to click down below and get all of these academic papers. But now that we've sort of covered what fungal foot infections and fungal nail infections are, I want to highlight this really fascinating paper which came out in the research literature just this week. And this is a really important publication. It essentially was looking at the associations between fungal nail infections and COVID-19 clinical outcomes. And I have really put the abstract directly up online here because I really want to discuss this for the remainder of this presentation. And in order to discuss this, I want to make two definitions very clear in your mind. Whenever you're looking at especially medical research, there is something called the OR or the odds ratio. And that describes the probability of an event, which is then divided by the probability of a non-event. And so in this research paper, the scientists was looking at determining whether or not there was a connection or a correlation between those who presented at hospital with COVID-19 symptoms and whether or not there was a connection with this underlying foot and nail fungal infection. And guess what? And they, there was. And we're going to track through what the five dominant connections were between COVID-19 disease, disease severity and what the scientists saw. But to define this, I need to also talk about something called the CI, which is the confidence interval. And you'll often see this in the research literature. And the confidence interval is can easily be defined as if you did the study 100 times, 95 out of 100 times, the true value would be within these bounds. So what did the scientists discover? Well, they found that increased hospitalization was associated with the presence of onychomycosis. And you can see that the odds ratio for that is 3.56. So that means this is 3.56 times more likely to occur if you have fungal nail infections. And you can then see that the CI measures the confidence interval. So we've stated that 
people with fungal male infections have an increased rate of hospitalization and the range spans 2.18 to 5.80 and the average is 3.56 times. So now we can track through, now that we understand what the odds ratio means. So what is the connection between initial inpatient versus outpatient visits? And again, we see that it's almost twice as likely that you'll be an inpatient if you have this fungal nail infection. Now, if your COVID-19 symptoms are particularly severe and you require oxygen therapy, you're 2.77 times more likely to require that if you've got a fungal nail infection. And again, we can also look at the fourth point, severe critical versus asymptomatic COVID-19 symptoms. Again, it's almost double, or it is double, 2.28 times more likely to be severe or critical if you have this underlying nail infection. And of course, the worst one, death, and you're 7.48 times more likely uh, to have that outcome if you have a fungal nail infection. So, as I said, the links to this publication, so you can read it for yourself, are going to be in the show notes. I think it is a really salient paper because it focuses on something that you can see with your own eyes. So check out your own feet, check out those of other people, and talk to your friends and family about fungal nail infections. They are particularly problematic, and it's something that we should all be aware of. And these sorts of studies highlight the fact that an immunocompromised status is going to make itself known. And you can determine that in many cases just by looking down at your own toenails. In any case, each week I bring you these really what I think are cutting edge uh, research. More videos and free surveys are available, including an ebook which focuses on mold in the built environment. You can get that at my website at drcameronjones.com. In any case, each week I bring you new research straight out of the literature and describe it in plain and simple terms so that you can optimize your own health and well-being. Anyway, bye for now. See you next week.